The engine that I'm going to be talking about today is Engine 16. Engine 16 is a 2004 Pierce Contender. It weighs just over 30,000 pounds and has a water tank with a capacity of 750 gallons of both water, Class A, and Class B foam. This engine is equipped with a single stage centrifugal pump. This engine has a max pumping of 250 GPM and a max PSI in hand lines of 250 PSI. If we go ahead and take a look at the capacity rating plate, which shows the capacity at a draft lifting water 10 feet, this pump is capable of 1,260 GPM at 150 PSI, 882 GPM at 200 PSI, and 630 GPM at 250 PSI. And this engine is governed at 2,390 RPM. What we're going to go ahead and do is go into the driver's compartment. I'm going to show you how to put this pump into gear and get it running and then from there we'll step out and take a look at the pump panel and move on to those steps. So we're going to go ahead and step into the driver's compartment. So if we were to put the rig in a pump, going from it being in drive, we're going to put our foot on the brake, come to a complete stop, honk the horn to let people know that we've stopped, and then from here we're going to put it in a neutral and we're going to set the parking brake. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and shift the transfer case down here, the pump shift, and shift it all the way down. So since the engine isn't running, you can kind of hear it engage. Um, at this point, we're going to look at the speedometer and watch it jump between 12 and 18 RPMs. Also what we can do is take a look at these two lights and a great indicator to make sure that it's in pump is to look and see if those lights are lit up. So basically when it's in pump, the transfer case is activated and it transfers power away from the rear wheels. So basically those are disengaged and that power is sent to the pump. Then the pump is driven by the gearbox. So once we've done the steps in here, we're going to go ahead and step out and anytime we're stepping out we're always going to check to make sure there's no traffic. Step out safely. And what I like to do on my way over is pull my tank to pump, which puts the rig in pump, and then from here, set my wheel chocks. Once I've done that, uh, we can go ahead and move over to the pump panel, and I'll show you the different components. Starting from the very top of the pump panel, you can see that we've got both the master intake and master discharge valves. So basically, the master intake valve shows us the pressure coming in, the master discharge valve shows us the now that we've showed you how to put engine 16 into pump, we're going to go ahead and go over the pump panel and what it has to offer. So heading over here, we've already talked about the master intake and master discharge valves. Moving down, we've got the panel lights, which basically control lights of the panel. And then to the left of that, we have the pressure governor, which on this engine is electronic. Basically, with this governor, the engine throttle regulates the power output of the engine to match the pump discharge requirements. So when the pressure in the discharge exceeds the pressure necessary to maintain fire streams, the pressure governor reduces the excessive pressure by slowing down the engine speed, which in the end slows down the impellers spinning the water. Moving to the left, we've got the engine info. So there's the water, oil, the tachometer, and the voltmeter. And then we have our foam system, our onboard foam, foam system, of both 30 and 20 gallon tanks with our class A and class B foam. So we have our foam level gauges which show us the different levels of our foam along with the switches, our buttons for display, changing modes and changing percentages. Coming back over to the right side, we have our tank fill line and basically this can be used to circulate water through the pump to prevent overheating when no lines are flowing. Also, when filling the tank, as long as we're connected to an outside source, this can be open to fill the tank. We have the engine cooler to the right of that, which helps to keep the tank from overheating. And just below that, we have the primer, which basically, when priming the pump, it involves moving the air from the pump and replacing it with water so that the pump is able to function properly. Ideally, priming should be done between 1,000 and 2,000 RPMs. If we come over here, we can see that we've got a control for the passenger size discharge along with a bunch of other 
hose lines that we're able to open. And as you can see on this engine, each hose line for the most part has its own pressure gauge. So for example, we've got right here our passenger side discharge, which is one of our pre-connects, and our driver's side discharge. So if we were to have the tank flowing, these pressure gauges would almost match the one up top for the master discharge. And with multiple lines flowing, what we can do is close them partially or open them all the way, depending on how much pressure we would like to have flowing. Coming down here, we've got two more discharges, and you can see that this discharge is controlled by this valve right here, and this discharge is controlled by this valve. And then as you go to the bottom, we've got drains for the different discharges and our soft section hose. So right here, this is one of our intakes that goes into our single stage centrifugal pump. Um, if you can see here that we are equipped with a bleeder valve, which helps to eliminate air as water is flowing in. And then also we have a pressure release valve up here, and this helps to relieve pressure or excess pressure entering the tank so that damage is not caused to the tank as water flows in. So we're gonna go ahead and walk over to the other side of the engine, and I'll show you the different valves that we have in um, ports on our officer side, and then we'll talk a little bit about the pump. So coming over here on our officer side, you can see that we have exactly the same intake as we did on the driver's side with the same different valves and release valves. We have our master discharge. It's a large diameter port, and this basically allows us to discharge into five inch hose. And then we have another two and a half discharge, along with some extra spanners, our drains. And then if you open up this, we can see our primer fluid. So the primer fluid is kind of one of the key components of being able to prime the pump. Because this pump is a single stage pump, it has nine main components. The eye, the hub, the veins, the impeller, the shrouds, casing, volute, stripping edge, and discharge. So basically, if a drop of water were to enter the pump, what it would do is it would enter the eye through the intake. So it's gonna go in right here and enter into the pump and go through the eye of the pump. So if we take a step back and look, we can see that that intake goes right inside of the engine and through what's called the hub, which is basically the ring around the eye. It enters into the veins of the impeller inside of the pump and it spins around. So the spinning motion forces the water outside towards the shroud and against the casing as pressure buildup occurs. The volute is the shell shape of the casing that encloses everything in the pump. And as water hits the stripping edge, it's prevented from going back around inside of the impeller and it's forced out the discharge to its final destination. So that discharge could be anything from these two and a half ports to the five inch discharge that we have on the other side to coming out of any of these pre-connects that we have here. So that is the pump on engine 16 for you and thank you for your time.